I've been building robots for a long time. I started back in Australia uh, building robots based on uh, Gray Walter's uh, machines and then uh, a grad student. And when I, once I got to MIT, my students and I started building lots of different robots, um, some of which ended up uh, inspiring missions to Mars, etc. Recently, well, recently, since 92, I've been working on humanoid robots uh, with various students. And I'm going to show you a couple of clips of some of them. Um, and uh, these are the, the robots that are still pretty much in my lab, although all three people uh, mentioned on this uh, slide have finished their PhDs in the last four or five weeks. But the robots live on. And uh, as Jim mentioned, I've also been involved uh, with uh, uh, people who started out as Europe's with me, Colin Angle and Helen Grainer in uh, iRobot Corporation, where we've now sold literally millions of robots. Um, so I've been very interested in robots for a long time, and I have an admission to make tonight, and that is that I'm a robot. Uh, and I mean that uh, in, a, in a serious sort of way. Uh, in response to the question about living machines, I view myself as a living machine. I am made up of biomolecules. Those biomolecules interact in, in uh, rule-like patterns, and out of that emerges this thing you see before you. But I also claim to be a human. Uh, I claim I am both a human and a robot, and all of us humans are robots. And to me, this question is nothing really to do with Zeus or Juno or Yahweh or um, Brahma or Shiva or Buddha. It, it, it's a separate realm. It has nothing likewise to do with Jesus or with Muhammad or even L. Ron Hubbard. They are separate worlds. And I think that we uh, serve our science best by keeping those worlds separate. I don't think we are the same. I don't think a robot is going to be called human, even though Rod thinks he's the same as one. And while it might become possible to biologically engineer humans, like we're able to now biologically engineer some aspects of human tissue, and that might someday be the case that uh, you know, some brilliant findings lead us to be able to ultimately injure pe uh, um, engineer people, those would still be people, not robots. I think when it's made out of something else, uh, it has some very different properties. And I'll just add parenthetically, um, who would want to engineer a whole human? Rod, you know there's a much more fun way to make new humans? <laughs> <laughs> my, my husband's here. I'm sorry, <laughs> you know, I know he has children. I'm sorry, Janet, his wife, um, and my children uh, do. Okay, I just couldn't resist. So, <laughs> okay, so Jim also asked, what is the state of technology today vis-a-vis -vis these conditions? And even though I don't think a robot will be called human, because I work on an area called affective computing, and that's with an A, despite that the Boston Globe nicely confused it with effective computing recently, uh, this, this is, um, our, our technology is at the forefront of giving uh, computers, or our research is at the forefront of giving technology skills of emotional intelligence, the ability to sense and respond to emotion. We use that to help people with autism to recognize the facial cues of those that they can't recognize or to help the blind. Uh, we use it to try to make technology less annoying and a whole bunch of other uses. Um, but inside that, the most controversial bit is to what extent are we giving technology not just the ability to communicate emotion, um, but to have emotion. For more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at veritas.org.